Hello, uh, welcome to our show. I'm Ray. And I'm Crystal, and we are students of astrology, candidly musing every week on what's new. For those just joining us, uh, we're going to go over the transits and the themes and the experiences that we're seeing. So follow along to learn with us. So Ray, how are you doing this week? Um, This week has been really interesting. I feel like there have been a lot of like really long time issues that have been being resolved. Like maybe it's a Saturn. It feels very Saturnian. I'm noticing Saturn. I'm noticing Saturn. Uh, just like I was, um, I don't know. It feels like there's been things that were, I'm not even going to generalize. I'll just say what was going on. <laughs> I, <laughs> Let's go. I <laughs> right. <laughs> I had a uh, issue with the bank from like uh, April, May that I have just been too nervous to like fully follow up on and figure out because last time I had followed up, they were not very receptive to taking responsibility for anything. So I don't know, I ended up getting so frustrated yesterday from something unrelated. I was having trouble with one of my dogs um, and I was just frustrated. My body was so activated and I was like, I'm just going to get it over with and make the phone call. And so it was one of those things where it felt like I remember sitting there and I was just like thinking about how overwhelmed I was that it hasn't been done yet. It's been so long. There's other things with the bank that I need to do that's, for, you know, dependent on this one other thing getting done. And I, I don't know, it's like, cause I was already feeling activated and I was already feeling like my adrenaline was already pumping. I was like, my dog was just trying to bite me cause I'm wiping off her paws. Um, I'm just going to get it over with. I already felt like I was in a battle or activated state. And so I'm like, I may as well fight. Oh, it. I feel like it. <laughs> so airy. <Aries. laughs> yeah. Well, I've sat in airy. So it's like, yeah, it's like that. But how has this week been for you? And I was going to say also, it's kind of funny that you were like dealing with like spank things. We just had that eclipse um, in your second and eighth houses. <laughs> it's all like, my value mm. other people's money da, 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 like things like that um so that's kind of funny yeah it was like a pretty crazy week for me um like I'm I've continued to like thrive in this job I'm doing and like get more responsibility and just like have a sense of like yeah like I feel like my career is actually like churning along now and it was like stagnant for like over a year because I was like dealing with this like terrible mental health um mm back in like 2021 but I actually feel like I can feel my fifth house year approaching more because like mm -hmm. I'm nearing the end of my fourth house year because I'm going to be 28 in January and yeah it's just like um the eclipse brought up a lot of realizations too about like my love life because that's been something I've been like really grappling with um just like trying to figure out like why I've never been why I've been single my entire life what does that mean about me and just like feeling very challenged in that like I have to like find a new way of like faith that like no one ever had to like no one ever taught me and like mm. things like that and also just like understanding like um how to understand my own value like as a son in the second house that was that's like not explicitly like an eclipse thing but I guess because I do loosely associate the second house with like Venus and like Taurus I was thinking a lot about that and I was thinking about like mm -hmm. how to understand how I have value to not just me but other people as well and yeah I got my nails done which like uh maybe doesn't objectively have that much value to people but like I really for many years like really wanted my nails done like consistently because I always feel like more glam like an adult when like mm -hmm. I have a manicure but like I couldn't afford it for a while and like um I couldn't even afford getting like my hair done and like in LA I just felt sort of like eventually as I grew older there was a standard of luxury that I couldn't quite reach that had never bothered me until I think I got older like I think when I first got there when I was 22 I was like yeah whatever I don't really care about material things and I think as time went on I grew more into my second house like son I was like wait this actually really matters to me and not necessarily like materialism for the sake of that but like realizing that I have a relationship to my things in the material world and like 
I don't like living in my head, but now I feel like everything's like actually actualizing. And that was a huge thing that I felt like the eclipse gave me like the kind of feeling that this really is a new beginning to be in New York and to be like a writer who like, I don't know, has like a lot of like social connections, like, like, and such like, that's been really crazy. So yeah, like, I feel like it was a good week for like realizations and like probably mental health wise was better than like it has been in a while. Um, I think because I'm beginning to adjust. So that's really good. Yeah, it definitely, I've noticed like a reoccurring theme with everything in Scorpio. Um, and especially with uh, the trine to Neptune in Pisces, um, with Venus and Mercury still on that trine. Um, even though it's not applying anymore, there's been a huge just theme, a uh, reoccurring theme of beliefs dying off like beliefs that we've had for so long that we were like either about relationships or about money or about um like medical situations even or legal situations like for example i have very very little faith in institutions in general whether it's educational medical legal i just don't i expect the worst mm -hmm. um just based off of my experiences with all of those institutions um, collectively and individually. And because of that, it makes it, it can make it difficult to sign up for a class or to make a doctor's appointment or to do a legal action. And last week, you know, of course, uh, Eclipse was also um, election day on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And so last week, um, my husband and I went to vote like early voting in person and we got there and we parked and I live like five minutes from downtown so I live inner city even though it's not a huge city so I was expecting just a lot like just a lot of chaos and I was able to find like it was like free parking and a parking garage it was like really nice we parked really close to the entrance where we needed to go in and we went in and we were in and out in less than 15 minutes to vote and he had a problem with his ballot and had to like get it reprinted and redo it again and that was still like less than 15 minutes and mm -hmm. so i was like oh my gosh this was like way way easier everyone was so nice it was so it was just such a pleasant experience and every other experience i've had maybe not every other but many of them have been very unpleasant and things move very slowly and you just have to take what you get with a smile and it's just such an uncomfortable space to be in for me um so it was nice for that for that belief to die because that for that belief to be like well maybe things aren't so bad and so we took it a step further and we went and got uh a copy of our marriage license and then we went to the different building and i updated my last name because i never did that after we got married um so, and it was just easy. Like, the, I think the worst part of it, the worst part of it, quote unquote, was that we had to wait like maybe 20 minutes in the social security office while two other people were ahead of us. Like it was not bad at all. And so I'm noticing a lot of like really deeply held beliefs that are getting challenged and they're getting challenged in a way that's exciting and fun and refreshing, even though it's scary that they're being challenged because it's like you're shining a flashlight on this ghost. Mm -hmm or like this monster yeah. but then you realize it's not so scary like they maybe they'll talk back to you once you interact with them and maybe they won't they don't have your worst interests and even just going through the bank stuff yesterday like it was nice like they were really receptive to what i had to say and we just talked it out they opened an investigation and that was it it was i don't know yeah it's been really refreshing i think this makes a lot of sense um because i feel like beliefs about myself are definitely like transitioning like beliefs about like my love life and also beliefs about like my ability to have money because I also like got a new credit card like um that kind of actually wait it was actually literally the first day of Scorpio season I got a new credit card mm. and I haven't had a new credit card in like years um it was like the, the apple card the one that's like oh like if you get like if you use this you get like two percent back on like da -da -da stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's actually like been really nice because it's like basically like everything is like two percent off as long as I pay it off and because I'm job now I actually have faith in my ability to do that so like just the freedom to like buy whatever I want makes me not want to like spend that much money too because it is like you know like a certain credit line but like 
I just feel like I have more like security and like more energy to like get through things. So I'm really grateful for that. What I was thinking about though is like, um, because Mars is the traditional ruler of Scorpio and Mars right now is in retrograde in like Mm. Gemini. I would say that like, like for me, because I've been practicing, I think how to like tackle my belief systems, especially because they're on the 12th house and like my Mars is like natally retrograde in a Mercury sign. So I feel like I've always been like plagued with, I think the energy that a lot of people are going through right now, where they have the energy to like deal with their belief systems falling away and such. Like a lot of people are just burnt out and like upset. And like, mm. I guess I've been like a little upset, but not any more than like other periods of my life. Like I would say this is the happiest objectively I've ever been, even if there have been some like terrible times. Um, like I think last week, really solidified to me like where I stand in context to everyone else too because as a first house stellium with like the north and the 12th house it's like my destiny to go from like super understanding myself to like really understanding other people but like it's been like a trial to like get to that point did were the eclipses in your that was in your 12th house right Mm -hmm, yeah the eclipses were my 12th and 6th house so Mm. yeah like it was like Taurus was like the freedom to like like Taurus in my sixth house felt a lot like I was like reading about how the sixth house is like the house of disagreement like it's the house of like how you have conflicts yeah like kind of like your ability to be like critical and like critical about your rituals so it's funny because I got like really organized because my friend helped me like understand that I have an internal system of organization and like a workflow for how my ideas work so it's really productive in terms of like I got some like really good advice from people that like really felt catered to me specifically it wasn't just like the generic advice that I always knew deep down I couldn't follow and be successful with but like yeah I was getting just like really good insight from actually like two like two Scorpio placements and then this one guy was like a Taurus placement so it was actually kind of funny that I look at it because it was like yeah like the energy of the eclipse signs was like helping me get my life together because like I've always felt kind of like if I'm not organized enough then like I'm not worthy of being like in the society because my mom really put the fear of God in me with that but then I realized oh I already am organized in this certain way and like Mm -hmm. I don't need yeah so it was like really positive time a lot of other people I know were like really going through shit though because I think they're not used to like having to like experience energy like against their will and like know how to interface with Mm. it I do think knowing astrology can be like a competitive advantage in this sense because like you are like maybe not entirely prepared but somewhat like able to interface with what's going on better what do you think I agree I think um what I found is no if you know something's coming really far ahead of time that can be nervous making but if it's something kind of soon or you're already in it knowing this has a stop date no matter what you're going through it has a stop date whether that's next week or next year or next month that always brings some sort of relief like the fact that things inevitably change even Mm -hmm. though that's inherently stressful it's inherently relieving at the same time um so yeah I find that especially in situations like I think even in the horoscope I wrote like for the this last eclipse um like whether you want whether you're open to the change or not, it's coming. Like, this isn't one of those, take advantage of this opportunity. It's like, this is eclipse season. Things are changing. Things are dying. This is a full moon eclipse in the house of death. And Mars is, I mean, in Mar- it's in Scorpio, you know? So um, I've been thinking a lot about that. And then also, I just learned a lot about the 12th and the 6th houses specifically. So it's really mm-hmm. funny that those were where you had your eclipses. Wait, what were you learning about them for? Oh, I've been dying to cut in. So when you had, <laughs> when you were talking yeah. about how the six is like the house of disagreement, I had never heard of that until like last week. So I was like, wow, there were a lot of, I was listening to a class um, and I was going over the houses and it was going over the 12th, the sixth, the second, the eighth, but notably the 12th, the sixth in this case. And it was talking about how those houses are related to the houses that come after them, uh, the first and the seventh. And so The 12th um, is a place of like isolation. It can mean prisons, it can mean hospitals. And those were things that I knew, but I didn't know it could mean large animals. I never heard that before, larger than a sheep specifically. 
Um, it can also <laughs> mean far more. No, literally. Um, yeah, very, very, very much so. I actually just worked with a large animal vet. Ooh, what does the Titanic have to do with the 12th house then? Well, the common theme, the thread that connects all those things together is that they all take you away from yourself. So mm -hmm. even though the planets are moving towards the first house, they're moving towards it, they're also the other, there's primary motion and secondary motion. They're going opposite directions. The other motion of the houses is going the opposite way. So even though you're getting closer to yourself, it feels like you're getting further and further. And then with the sixth house, it's, um, I had never heard that it could be conflict or disagreements. I had only heard small animals um, and like health and routines. And that I think was like, it's like the freedom yeah. to disagree. Like, I don't necessarily know if it is disagreements like themselves. No, it is. It's fully. Oh, it's, really? Okay. So, yeah, you have I was the thinking of, like the energy of course, first house. I was like, oh, I was thinking about how it applies to like me, not like everything outside of me. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, with the with the seventh, it's our ability to unify and be one with another person and to connect and do that. And um, the six the things that take us away from that. It's conflict, it's disagreements. You can't be in union with someone and disagree with them at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you kind of can if you have nuance, but on just a black and white level, you can't be in disagreement and agreement at the same time. And so you had eclipses happening in those two houses. No, because like, like all the sixth house people I know, it's funny because of the loose associations with Virgo, are people that are like rebels and like um, doing something a little different. And my south node's in the sixth house. So I think like I'm trying mm. to be more agreeable in this lifetime and I do not like it. Yeah, that's interesting. Because like in the sixth house, uh, disagreeability yeah. and in the twelfth house would be like the opposite. So it's funny because even in isolation, there is agreeability or like, not, it's not the same as like relational, like harmony, right? Like the seventh house, but it's like. Well, it's more so like the, huh. the opposite of the seventh than the twelfth, because yeah. the twelfth would have like similar themes and so, would be more similar to the sixth really rather than opposite. Because like a huge thing, I actually would frame like my hero's journey lately has been the freedom to be agreeable, like mm. the safety to like like trust other people because I don't do that naturally like I think most people are kind of shitty um but see I like I think of it as like people are shitty not from like this place because it, it didn't make me like an emo sort of like you know misanthropist because like I'm like one of the most generous people that like people say they know apparently but like it's because I'm like so able to like detach from like trusting people easily but to where it almost becomes like an indulgence to for me to not trust people and it's actually been like more proactive to be like okay let me trust the energy I got before to like understand what the situation was and not just think that this person's completely forgot about me or didn't care about me ever because like that was like my tendency as a kid was to like be like oh well I don't need you anyway because you don't need me or da 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 you know mm -hmm. That's so funny thinking about uh, the fact you have Mercury in Aquarius because I have Mercury in Libra. And as soon as you were like, you know, I think people kind of by default are kind of shitty. Like not that it is something you consciously put on them or causes like necessarily like a lot of conflict with how you see people. Um, but just thinking about me having Mercury in Libra, I'm like, I want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt, especially with Venus and Cancer. I'm like, I want to give everyone, everyone has good intentions. And it's like, oh so not the truth. No. Wait, what were you um, talking about with my Mercury and Aquarius to like what I just said? Because you're contrasting it with your Mercury and Cancer. Um, well, Mercury and Libra oh, ruled by Venus and Cancer. I know mm -hmm. it's like so technical. Um, I was thinking about how it's the Saturn world Mercury that you have. And so it's a little bit colder. And I think Mercury inherently didn't you know no matter what sign it's in it questions things and it's curious mm -hmm. and it's contrary to Jupiter's just things will get better you know I'm very optimist like mm -hmm. I have to be hopeful it's very contrary to that of well how will it get better why will it get better when will it get wait, better wait, this is what I ask myself every day <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like it's kind of an exploration of those things more so than an attachment to them um which is hard to talk about because I think when you talk about or say things like People are shitty. People generalize that and over conflate it when really it's just one part of the what you're talking about, like one little brick on the house that you're building. 
Wait, yeah, no, that's crazy. So my Mercury opposes my moon. So I'll go like, people are shitty, hmm, but they also might not be. Hmm, this is confusing. Like, mm. I always have this like back and forth because like my Mercury and like, or my Mercury and Aquarius opposing my moon and Leo. It's like a loose opposition. Like, it's not very direct, but it's still kind of like, I'll be tempted to be like upset. And then my Mercury will be like, hmm, maybe you don't have to be upset. I'm like, hmm. And I'll be both upset but curious. So like, I've always known the right thing to do as a result, but like I know how I feel and I'm pissed. But also, <laughs> I will like externally not let people know. And, think, and this has like been something I realize people can like catch on to. They can catch on to like I'm like fucking pissed, even if I'm like acting a certain way. But they can also tell that I don't actually care that much, even if I think they think I care. And I'm just like paradoxical much. But um, anyways, needless to say, last week was a lot. Um, and the good thing is like. It heralds the stuff that's going to happen this week because we have a bunch of transits coming up to get back on track. Uh, yeah, I just want to repeat a quote you said because I think it's very fitting for the transits this week. Um, I know how I feel and I'm pissed. And wow, just, such a good It's quote. Venus, it's Mercury, and they're both in Scorpio. So it's a little bit of Mars. And I'm like... Do we think Mercury... Energy. Yeah, I guess Mercury and Scorpio means Scorpio can be combative in like their respective ways, huh? yeah uh definitely i'm going to yeah do we want to kind of transition to the transits this week yes let's do it honestly yeah like so we uh, okay so the transits this week november 13th through 19th are venus and mercury and scorpio are sextiling pluto and capricorn which is still trining neptune and pisces um and then the Sun and Scorpio will try Neptune retrograde in Pisces, November 14th. Venus and Scorpio will try Jupiter retrograde in Pisces on the 15th. And then Venus enters Sag at what will be 10 p.m. on the uh, West Coast Pacific time, no, but 1 a.m. in Eastern time, November 16th. So in the middle of the night, it'll become Venus and Sag season and woohoo because it's my Venus return my Venus is in Sag so excited for that there's a time where I didn't really care but now I do um and then Mercury and Scorpio will try and Jupiter retrograde in Pisces and then the Sun and Scorpio will once again sextile Pluto and Cap and then we have Mercury entering Sagittarius November 17th. And then on the 19th, Mars and retrograde in Gemini will square Neptune retrograde in Pisces. So I guess looking at everything for the week ahead, seems like the most significant transits are the ingresses of Mercury and Venus into Sagittarius. And we just have a shit ton of sextiling and trining of the Pisces placements like the Neptune and Jupiter retrograde so it seems mm. like it's like as opposed to how um last week was like well last few weeks were like a lot of air and water we got some fire in the mix now it's still primarily I say Scorpio and Sag energy um but Pisces is kicking up a storm too so that's cool <laughs> but yeah water and fire are so interesting as elements to me because I feel like and they both like kind of dominate in the elemental space. Like if we think of like the masculine, ele the yang elements as like air and fire and then the yin elements as like water and earth, the, like the feminine ones. Um, I think that like water and fire stick out the most because they're the most like contentious when placed within each other. Um, like, like it's like the right amount of heat can like make water boil and the right amount of water can just put out fire or something. Um, but it is quite interesting to me because I have a lot of fire in my chart, but my friends who have like both fire and water are like such interesting, strange paradoxes of people. Um, but I would say like, I can feel that we're getting into like later degree Scorpio energy, which I think is more relieving to me because not just on my North node exactly now, but yeah. What are your thoughts on Sag? Cause it's entering, I believe your ninth house. Right, Mercury Venus, yeah. from the eighth, yeah. going up for all the belief shedding. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I've actually I was born right after Pluto went into Sag, so I've got it at zero degrees. I was like right on that that transition there. Um, 
so yeah, you can definitely expect some powerful belief changing. Mm -hmm. um, we've got Venus and Mercury, sextiling Pluto, trining Venus, and then entering Sag while the sun trines Neptune and sextiles Pluto. So I definitely think with their transition into Sag, it's going to be, it feels like we've, um, the analogy that just popped into my head, we'll just work with it. <laughs> um, it feels like we had kind of like, okay, everything's been in Scorpio. It's been a period of death. It's been making the best with what we have, doing the most that we can um, while feeling like we're in like some kind of diplomat in a war, like going, you know, like in this high pressure situation, like trying to negotiate and advocate and, uh, you know, balance, you know, go all, have that kind of battle. Um, it hasn't been like a battle with like blood and violence. It's been, I feel more, um, more sneaky, more uh, emotional and intellectual. And so with them entering, it feels like we had that period of death and the image I keep getting as things move into Sag is like a Frankenstein kind of energy of like, we've been putting together, like we've been building this man. <laughs> and when things go into Sag, it's going to be like, we're in the process of bringing it to life and of actually manifesting the ideal of what we want into, you know, into a body, into the real world. And once it's there, once it's alive, once that lightning bolt has hit that Uranus moment, which was probably the eclipse, um, and so it's conjunct Uranus. Um, it's like now we've got this living creature and who we have to teach how to communicate with the rest of the world and how to navigate it and how to just how to live and be a part of it. And there's a sense of othering that comes with that that new creation that's unique there's no other person that looks like that person um or even that creation and yeah it's just that awkward transitional period that feels like this week is going to be between death and coming back alive and learning how to be alive again mm -hmm. and then next week especially as things transition and decide and kind of stay there it feels like okay, maybe we'll get a hang of this. Maybe we'll know how to move our toes and walk really well. And maybe we'll learn a few words. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Cause like, I always think of how like Hades and Zeus or Pluto or like, um, I get like Scorpio and like Sag rule, like whatever, like the gods that are associated with them. I always mm -hmm. think of how it's like, like Jupiter is like God of the sky, right? And then like Scorpio is with the underworld and how it's like you go, like you climb out of the underworld and you go up and you go and like mm. see what's out there. But it's like, I think it makes sense why you start with the underworld and then you go as opposed to like, you go from the sky to the underworld. Um, because like, to me, as someone with like, you know, like I have Pluto in the first house. So I feel like I've always like, been sort of like orbiting Scorpio energy and yet at the same time I also have like my Sag stellium ruled by Jupiter and Sag so I'm extremely Sag. I felt like I could only feel expansion and luck from like also deeply understanding darkness and like deeply understanding mm. like the idea that like you have to keep updating your relationship with your faith and your optimism. Like you have to know when to adjust it. Like you can't just like keep like, you know, hardballing it constantly. I think this is something that people don't understand, but it's like a yeah. natural sort of way that um, all this goes. So, yeah. Um, I think that the Scorpio Sag transition, it feels kind of like, okay, if you're going to be optimistic now, it's like you earned it because you were like really mm. weathering like the winter of it. And I guess not related, but like as a Capricorn, I'm always thinking a lot about like who deserves what like what is the function of punishment like what is the function of like all of that so I think like Scorpio and Sag seasons are always my favorite seasons because I mean they are like the holiday seasons but I think that they force people to be reflective in a way that I don't see at any other time of the year especially like summer which is why I'm like yeah. dude 
come join me in my I have to be reflective all the time bullshit so yeah yeah that definitely you bring up such a good point which again is something I'm thinking it made me think of something I wrote for the the eclipse on Tuesday um and that's just like darkness's place in life and how it has a place in life and whether we want it or not it's here and how often darkness is associated with evil or with just bad things when like how miserable would we be if it was day all the time if there was no darkness if we didn't get a time to rest and to sleep and to process everything that happened in the sun um it wouldn't be a good life it wouldn't be one worth living because we wouldn't be able to appreciate like we wouldn't be, be able to appreciate the sunset if it never came mm -hmm. yeah exactly and so I think also with like the trines to like Neptune and Jupiter which are both retrograding in Pisces it's also like okay you have to find your faith even in the most unideal circumstances mm -hmm. like I don't know like I feel like I've been like going through a lot of like processing of the past like we talked about last week and like just like processing of my own trauma and like deeply like understanding like why I am the way I am and like that's definitely I think kind of like Piscean in some way because it's like forces you to reckon with like the universe and the collective and Scorpio and Pisces always seem to me like adjacent to that like you know like Neptune is associated with Pisces and it's very about like the like waters murky waters in retrograde like and like the underworld is like also a very watery place like you have like the river sticks and like things like that so it's like yeah like you can only like stoke your fire to keep on like being mutable and like being flexible right because that just mutable fire you know like maintain this like flexibility of faith and belief if you put in the work to like swim through the water and like understand them so that's how I see it yeah it's really interesting thinking about just even sad energy in general because once you said you mentioned like oh it's mutable fire it made me think of like oh like if you're I don't know it felt like it matched the energy of Sag so much of traveling and of going places and of movement yeah. and it's like if you have a fire or like a torch you have to adapt how you contain it or mm -hmm. like you might want a little lantern for one part but you might need like a big torch for another part and then you might want to turn it into a bonfire at some point but like <laughs> Aries that just needs a fire strong enough to last the battle and then it can go out and it's fine and then Leo it's like it's just got this little fire like in the body at all times it's always just this this light and this fire that is very hard to take out <laughs> or to put out um yeah, definitely. and yeah so it's uh, like life just moves in seasons like Scorpio is a time where everything's like feeling like it's dying like in a good way and then Sag is like a time for like people to like get the energy to like rebuild and everyone's just more inspired mm -hmm. and like <laughs> it's funny because I'm like literally having a discussion on like inspiration that's happening like during Scorpio season where like no one wanted to go and I'm just like and eh, well I'm here all year round so it's fine <laughs> I'm Sag all year round <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's like keeping your beliefs flexible because it's like a mutable sign that comes after a fixed sign. That transition is going to feel, I think, jarring. Not necessarily in a bad way, but like I would expect mm. people's like, optimism to be like reinvigorated or like at least like stimulated in some way this week. So yeah. Yeah, it's definitely like, okay, now that things are dead, what are you going to inherit from those deaths? Mm. And what can you rebuild on that same land? Like, okay, the land's cleared now, it's level what can you do with it? And it very much makes me think of um, Tara of like, how I think, is the tower like the Mars card? Yeah. Um, so exactly, it makes me think of like, Scorpio and the tower card and of this is the time where that's maybe being destroyed, and like torn apart. And my favorite part about that card is what comes next is the star like it's the hope like it's the rebuilding it's the inevitable like you look up at the sky and you see the stars and there's hope like things can change and things can get better and sometimes you can't see that when you're inside the tower and mm -hmm. you don't see it until it's knocked down and then um 
I don't know, you go outside and you look at the sky and you realize, wow, things are not as bad as, you know, I don't know. It's the scale of it. It's the, the Jupiterian hugeness of, you know, though I'm not, I'm not that significant, but I am important. Exactly. <laughs> last, thing, yeah, last thing I do want to mention though, is that mm. like, we didn't like, it's not, I don't think it's like an exact transit, but like Mars and Gemini is still there and it is going to be mm. opposing, I think, uh, like at some point, not this week, but it is like a loose opposition because they're opposite signs. And I do think that's like worth mentioning that like, despite the optimism, there will also be this sort of like, maybe like anxious energy of like being overstimulated. So like, mm. like they are, they don't relate to like indulgence in the physical sense, but I do think that like sometimes you can get high on your own supply when it comes to ideas when you have Sag and Mercury, play, or Sag and Gemini placements. So I would caution whoever has those to just be very careful to not like go overboard so yeah well this yeah, is makes me... funny too because like I was gonna say like I feel more inspired to start creating content again and writing on my blog and I'm like wait like if Venus like Mercury is about to enter Sag and like so is Venus so it's like crazy that like this is the week I want to like be doing that that is like no coincidence yeah yeah definitely I think it's well it's funny too even me trying to learn Chinese like oh yeah I'm thinking about the Frankenstein and it, having to learn how to talk and I'm like I'm literally trying to learn a new language right now oh my god wow <laughs> I love this yeah no like Sag is great also because you're asking me a Sag I like freaking like love talking about Chinese and like sending those effects and you've been like listening to all this music and I'm like yes <laughs> I was like, I hope you're okay with getting 10,000 songs no, today because that's what happened. I've been listening to them. So yeah, feel free to keep sending them to me. But like, it's a great time to like, explore and learn. And like, I don't think just about new things outside of you, but also about yourself. Because like, to me, my Sag energy naturally has gone towards understanding me um, and all the shit I've been through. And I think that a lot of the energy spent in my life is like the whiplash of like, how did I end up like, so like pathetic and sad as a kid to like being like really socially wealthy and respected in my community as an adult like it just is crazy when I think about it like my life is so different than it was when I was like 12 or 13 which obviously time has passed but like I feel like like my sense of hope is entirely done a 180 you know yeah definitely I um yeah sorry I had a thought and then I it went away. I was like, this is an important thought I want to hold on to. <laughs> Don't come back. Oh, um, I think one good thing to mention, maybe the last thing, since we're running well on time now, is um with Mars and Gemini and with especially with Venus and Scorpio, but in general, right now it feels like the time to fail and to just keep trying. It's a time of activity and of movement and of doing things. And mm -hmm. I think with that comes inherent failure and I just wanted to give a little pep talk of it's okay to fail. It's okay to make mistakes. And what's important is that you're actually trying and it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. It's very, very much just like learning a new language. For example, there's mm -hmm. not going to be a point where I'm like, I'm proficient, proficient, prof I'm mastered the language. Like that's not going to happen with the language I'm not born into unless it was like a long, you know, a decade's worth of study or something. And so the goal isn't to speak the language perfectly or to do the thing perfectly. It's to just do it. It's to learn a few words. It's to enjoy the the journey and the experience along the way. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think comparing it to a language makes it a little bit, it feel a little bit less high pressure because mm -hmm. it's very expected and reasonable to mispronounce things or to make mistakes or to say the wrong word. And you kind of just have to laugh at it. And I think it's important to kind of apply that mindset to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And like, as people can like stay flexible, then then that'll be like really help them. I feel like like the fixed energy really did do a number on me because like it like squares like my Mercury, my Moon, but the rest of me likes being mutable and flexible. So I'm like <gasps> relief. Yes. Yeah, it's like. 
the fixed part feels like it's inevitable. It's you can't help it. But then what's inevitable is the fact that it's changing. So my immutable, my immutable tendencies are happy with that, even even though it's also getting hiccups slower than expected. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Um, but we will persevere. We will be okay with all that. <laughs> we'll make it. And next week will be it's gonna it's keep getting better. We're only gonna we're only gonna get stronger. And yeah, I think I was like, collectively yeah, we're in the year, This year's a bit of a wash. Is this for reflecting now? Like no more new things, please. Actually, I don't want to really do actually. I just want to feel confident. <laughs> like I don't want to like actually have a boyfriend now would be like too much. I'm like, I'm already trying to onboard so much. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Um so yeah, it feels like this week would be a little bit of a break, a little bit of adjusting, and then once the sun goes into Scorpio, I think next week. Um that might feel like a time to maybe try some new things or do some explore exploration of some kind but for now just just relax just try to get through this week just try to you know just recover like this is the week for that oh hell yeah i'm so excited anyways okay well this was a great episode and i guess i'll see you next week when there are more sad trans and some more sad energy so excited to recap this upcoming week with you soon me too everyone have a good um a good time a good week <laughs> bye, bye.